Hello everyone and welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. As a follow-up from last week when the Vice President announced that hate speeches would be tantamount to committing an act of terror, the federal government is going a step further to monitor social media and make sure people are not using it as a platform to propagate hate and division. Of course, this does not mean there would be no freedom of speech, just that social media is one of the most powerful tools used in campaigning causes and, in some cases, hate. But that's on our focus this week. Former African leaders gathered in South Africa this past week for the Africa Leaders Forum. Past leaders on the continent discussed sustaining peace and security on the continent. And yes, they addressed their failed role in securing peace in Libya. I believe we will have got an African solution in Libya. If well, it was the leadership that dealt with the case of Taylor, that was still the leadership that we had. Who went to Obama? Did any of us go to Obama? We would have gone to Obama and tell Obama to his face. Now, Obama was shedding crocodile tears. Yes, yes, he said it was his face. He said crocodile tears when you are beginning of the mess. Three African member states of the Security Council at the point where that resolution 1973 was adopted. It was South Africa, Nigeria, and Gabon. And all of them voted for that resolution. If they hadn't, that resolution would not have passed. The biggest problem I had is that Africa had lost the initiative. Only we, 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 we went through a process, we came to a certain point. Then you have Macron calling the two leaders in Paris. They agree for an election next year. Crisis in the country began with the Arab Spring in 2011 and became much worse after Muammar Gaddafi was killed. Libya experienced its first civil war and first foreign military intervention and a proliferation of armed groups led to violence and instability across the country. It appeared Libya's liberators, being the coalition forces led by the United States, had not prepared for post-Gaddafi era. Today, more armed groups have emerged and Libya does not have a unified government. There is the government recognized by the West and there is one led by rebels. A pretty conducive situation for the Islamic State militants to creep in. And one more thing to worry about as peace is yet to return to Libya. Now, in contrast, peace is gradually returning to another hotspot in Africa, Somalia. Remember, it used to be known as the most dangerous place in the world, or one of the most dangerous places in the world. Not so much these days. Life is gradually returning to normal, and militant group Al-Shabaab is being pushed to a corner, despite isolated attacks every once in a while. Its former president, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, was at the African Leaders Forum in South Africa, and stop for a chat with my colleague, Betsy Dibia. Somalia is more hom homogeneous than most, yet there's still a problem. Mm -hmm. So why is the situation there not working up till now, so many decades later? One very important issue when it comes to Somalia is, you know, the problem of Somalia is more of a political problem. Uh, wrong politics, uh, bad practices of the politics in over 30 years have created the situation that we are in today because with so long period of war and fighting civil wars uh, nothing has happened in Somalia like genocide there was a civil war formal but there was no genocide maiming people cutting people mass graves is very limited happening of course when there is anarchy there is always abuses and misuses happens that's the moment. number two is we, we got an independence in the 1960s, in uh, early 19, late 1969, 70, military took over. We have 21 years of uh, military regime, and then the civil war happened. And then what happened is that the, after the civil war, post-conflict environment, you know, the level of mistrust and all this. Now the people of Somalia, they mistrust the state institutions because of their memory, lingering memory of the past dictator, dictatorship and dictatorial regime. So now 
Our challenge is we are moving away from the highly centralized system of governance that we know. People at my age and maybe senior, that's what we know. We said, no, this is not. We need a governance system that is highly decentralized, federal system. We don't have experience on the federal system. It's new to us. And then we are making the federation at a time when there is no uh, state that controls everything. So that's what makes a little bit more complex, you know, the situation. Lack of experience on the decentralized or devolution of power, and then lack of the level of vacuum or weak institutions that manages the decentralization process. This is what makes it a bit more uh, complex, but uh, it is because we have been in that situation for a long time now. There is a lot of tangible progress that has been made towards uh, establishing a federated Somalia in the, in the near future. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've we've had issues of a uh, food crisis, the bombing of peacekeepers, and so many other issues. What is the current situation in Somalia at the moment? In Somalia, as you said, uh, the civil war has ended long, long time ago. The anarchy that followed the civil war, uh, mostly it has ended now. We have only one and one problem, which is the terrorist groups, Al-Shabaab. Today in Somalia, uh, the, the, the federal government of Somalia controls the country. There are institutions and structures, governance structures in place. Uh, 